Hello, my name is Dean Ransom. I'm a wildlife ecologist and research scientist for AgriLife Research in Vernon, Texas. Here to talk for a few minutes about the Greater Roadrunner. Uh, most people are familiar with the Roadrunner, but few people know much about the bird's life history requirements, biology, and ecological relationships. We're finishing up a four-year study on Greater Roadrunners, and for the last four years, since 2006, we've been using radio telemetry to study movements, home range, uh, dispersal by young of the year, and, and uh, nesting ecology. And uh, we're here standing in a dense mesquite patch of woods to talk about the nesting biology. Uh, most people don't realize that roadrunners nest in trees rather than on the ground. Generally, um, not far from, a, from an edge like a, a road. We have a ranch road just uh, 50 feet away from us here that allows uh, easy access and easy escape and freedom of movement to hunt lizards and snakes for their young. Uh, the nest behind us is about 10 feet high, which is about twice as high as a average. Usually they're about a meter high uh, or less, <clears throat> but uh, definitely a couple of feet above ground. The young uh, stay in the nest for about 20 days after hatching. The incubation period is about 20 days as well, so a pair of roadrunners invest about 40 days worth of energy into bringing off their young. Clutch size is uh, average is about four, but can range as high as 10 or 11 eggs. Uh, most of the larger clutches probably don't survive the fledging. Let's take a look at the roadrunner nest behind us. This uh, nest just finished. It's empty. All uh, four of its young fledged and they're off running around with their parents who are still feeding them for some period of time. As we back up and uh, take a look at this, we can see that uh, it looks uh, an awful lot like a mockingbird nest in the sense that it was made of, of rather large sticks. But It's basically a, a flat platform with a shallow bowl uh, lined on the, on the top with uh, uh, rather large twigs. It's usually in the, uh, the crook or uh, a fork in, in a main trunk that provides stability, but we have found them out on very flimsy limbs at the edge of the canopy. Uh, there doesn't seem to be uh, a whole lot of uh, degree of selectivity, but we're working to resolve that in some of the data we collect. The home range around the nest site for a pair of roadrunners seems to approximate about 200 acres, which is fairly large. They do defend a smaller territory around the nest. The actual size uh, is something we're still working to resolve but uh, they do defend it aggressively against intruding roadrunners as an attempt to protect their young and the food supply that they rely on to feed their young. When feeding their young, it seems to be a common practice for one adult to remain on the nest to shade the young from the heat, and they trade off bringing food to the, to the young and uh, basically um, alternating the, uh, the feeding of the prey item to the, to the respective young. Roadrunners lay their eggs asynchronously, and incubation begins with the first egg laid. So in a given clutch of, of eggs, you'll have nestlings of different sizes, different ages. And uh, usually, as you might expect, the oldest uh, nestling tends to commandeer the food as the parents bring it uh, back to the nest. In some cases, uh, typically uh, situations where clutches are larger than normal, uh, older nestlings may end up eating their younger nestlings as a source of food. And after about 20 days, they will uh, leave the nest for good, never come back to the nest, and they um, follow the parents around for a couple of weeks until they're old enough to fend for themselves, at which time the adults will begin to become more aggressive towards their young. And it's at that point where we've been able to document uh, young of the year dispersing uh, great distances from their parental home range and territory. Some of our fledgling roadrunners have dispersed up to six miles. And that seems fairly large for a bird of the size of a roadrunner, uh, in conjunction with a large home range, suggests that uh, maybe uh, suitable territories might be limiting, uh, since we know that, that home range tends to increase with uh, the availability or uh, the lack of availability of necessary resources. Uh, it's an interesting question regarding the size of the home range and how that varies. It's something we're still uh, continuing to investigate. Um, We've looked at about 51 birds so far over the four years and some 50 some odd nest sites uh, that we have data on. 
and in the process of analyzing that data and coming to grips with what it means in terms of roadrunner conservation and management. Here's another roadrunner nest. Uh, it's just across the road and down from the previous one. This is last year's nest. We don't have any demographic data on it, but it's the same idea. This one's about half the height of the one across the road, but it's in a, a large single trunk mesquite tree, one of the largest here in the pasture. It is also protected by uh, an adjoining shrub. This is a lope bush, a very spiny protective bush. So the concealment around the nest is very dense. Uh, it's a lower nest and so the uh, the greater uh, shrub density is a more protective measure. The other one across the road was higher up which afforded it a, a, a sense of protection as well. Uh, we're working to try and characterize uh, the selectivity uh, of such trees and their uh, abundance on the landscape so we can get some idea of uh, uh, what they're using versus what's available. And that's important in the sense that this part of the world is uh, managed for domestic livestock and part of that management involves uh, mechanical and chemical brush control and so knowledge of, of wildlife requirements whether it's roadrunners or anything else is going to be important in how landowners manage their brush, their woody cover uh, for livestock and still accommodate a home for wildlife such as roadrunners.